Oh my god, finally! Yeah! Congrats for everyone who has made it this far with all your integration B training that you've done. That we have made it this far. A huge pat on the back because this is our final section of this entire integration B training. Okay? So, welcome. This is uh, integration B training for advanced. And this is part 20.3. In this section, we're going to be learning a new kind of a corollary to Glasser's Master Theorem that is popularized by MIT Integration B. And just saying that, you already know where this is going. Okay? So, yes, it is the Glasser's Master Theorem with tangents and cotangents. So, let's go ahead and finish this last episode of this training. So with this corollary, it states that whenever you have a function from negative infinity to infinity, whenever you have this, f of x minus cotangent of x dx, or, well actually I'll, I'll, I'll do this first. So this here is also equal to f of x. I know. Seems crazy, but I'm not done yet. You can also do the same thing. It's the same concept for x plus tangent of x. Very crazy, right? Uh, here's a way to think of it. Okay, we have a graph. And a lot of the times we have like our function, right? It's always like x minus 1 over x or... Uh, 1 over, so that's a minus, uh, 1 over x minus 1, right? So pretty much it, it was always looks like, uh, let's see, x, it would be like, um, I don't know, I don't know exactly what, what the graph looks like, but pretty much we get things like 1 over x, right? Or something like, something like this, or it, it'll always look something like, um, oops, I feel like I, I, undoed, I undoed something. But it'll look something like this kind of thing. And we have like asymptotes here. You know, whatever, right? So we had these vertical asymptotes. Okay. And of course, that's what that the uh, this part is, right? this where these each of these are like c1 c2 whatever to cn of vertical asymptotes okay so things like that satisfies the glasses master theorem okay cotangent and x well i'll do tangent x because i'm more familiar with tangent x what does the graph of tangent x look like it looks like this, right? And what does it also have? Vertical asymptotes. So, that is why it still satisfies with the glasses master theorem. Now, as you're probably thinking, oh wait, so any function would, no, not exactly, no. Let me actually show you the real reason why. So, the real reason why this works is because cotangent of x has a special sum formula. And that is the sum from n equal to negative infinity to infinity. I know, that's not really normal, but apparently you can do this. This is equal to 1 over x plus n pi. Okay. And it's actually uh, not that hard to memorize pretty much it's I don't remember exactly what cotangent looks like but to give you a tangent x so this is tangent x right let's say so pretty much the formula for tangent x is literally the sum of these pretty much right oh this is y equal, or like let's say in this picture here Oh, this is like y of 1 over, this is what, pi over 2? 
x minus pi over 2. And then we add this one. Oh, okay. So plus 1 over x plus pi over 2. And then you go on and on, and you keep adding more of the asymptotes, more of the asymptotes. And if you go on infinity, and same here with the other side, infinity, it, it is literally the exact same graph as tangent of x, which is why we say that this is equal to cotangent of x, right? Uh, of course, the tangent formula would look like similarly like, like this. So it would be, you know, this tangent x is equal to, well, uh, it, because it's a lot of pi over 2, uh, it would be, it would look like this. n equals to negative infinity, and then we have like x minus pi over 2, um, and then whichever, whatever pi n, 1 over 4, right? Uh, 1 over this, because we are, we're always getting pi over 2, right? Which is true, because it is vertical asymptote with a lot of pi over 2 intervals. So, this is tangent of x. This is cotangent. And for here to go here is actually pretty easy. Tangent of x is literally cotangent of pi over 2 minus x. Right? And you just kind of substitute that. So that's that's literally it. Okay? So, um, oh, I'm sorry. This is negative. I forgot. That's negative. That should be negative. Um, but yeah, that's... And, and that is why tangent is plus, because of that negative, okay? Because it needs to be positive, according to Glass's master theorem. So that is why this still satisfies Glass's master theorem, okay? So now let's go ahead and apply it. Starting with the MIT integrals, we have this. So how do we solve this, right? What do you notice? We have cosecant and cotangent x, huh? You can turn this in terms of cotangent of x. Okay, so let's simplify this. I noticed a balance we have infinite, uh, negative infinity to infinity, so it's a little suspicious, but we notice that we have 2x cotangent of x. This is simply cotangent square plus 1. Aha! This can be expressed as from dx x minus cotangent of x squared plus 1. Of course, we know what this is by Glass's master theorem. This is equal to pi. Because we know this is, it's one of those inverse tangent integrals. We've seen this so many goddamn times. This is equal to pi. Okay? Cool. Next integral. Oh god, what is this? Okay, so there's so many suspicious things about this. The bounds and x plus tangent of x. That's very sus. So, is there a way that we're going to have to turn this in terms of Glass's master theorem, in terms of x plus tangent x? And the answer I can already see, yes we can. If, we, if I divide cosine of x both uh, top and bottom, I'll get x plus tangent of x here. So just by looking at that, we already know that this is going to be sine of x over x dx. And that's also equal to pi. Okay. Look how fast we're solving these integrals, right? It's Glass's master theorem is so powerful. So, you know, in, for integration bees, it's super useful whenever we deal with something so ugly like this. But then you notice, wait, there's something suspicious about this. X plus tangent x, that looks familiar. Ah, this is secretly Glass's master theorem. Okay? Alright, next integral. Oh god, don't freak out. Don't freak out. I can already see what this is just by looking at the bottom. What is this? And here this is tangent squared plus 1. Oh, this is in terms of x plus tangent x, right? This is x. Okay, so if we simplify this, this is x plus tangent of x squared plus 1 all over x plus tangent of x squared. Wait a minute, if we use Glass's master theorem, right? This is ln of x squared plus 1 all over x squared dx. Oh, we've solved this integral before, right? If you remember that previous video, we, we had to solve this integral. Integration by parts, and it becomes a very nice inverse tangent. This is equal 
to 2 pi. Okay? So, again, it's not because I memorized the integral answer, it's because I memorized the process of solving the integral. And if you can do that, you can literally, you, you're technically solving it in your head and be like, oh, uh, easy. Answer is 2 pi. Okay? So, memorize the process of solving the integral is super crucial. Okay? All right. We're technically down to our last integral, so let's go ahead and move to our last example. Oh, God, what is this? Okay, don't freak out. This looks trippy. Wait, but there is something suspicious, though. I do notice something. So, bounds? Okay. Interesting. But why do we have tangent square, tangent square here? What happens if I divide both top and bottom by cotan? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, divide tangent squared top and bottom technically but in other words multiplying cotangent top and bottom you get dx 1 plus and then cotangent squared here this is x minus cotangent of x plus tangent of x squared okay can we use Glass Master Theorem on this, literally in this formation? Yes! Yes, you can! Because what Glass's Master Theorem states that as long as, you know, who cares, right? Infinity, you know, as long as it's in this formation, right? It will forever be equal to f of x. So, well, I'm sorry, uh, integral wise. Uh, improper integral wise, right? Forever, whichever formation, whatever. This, if it's in the form of this, you got it. So, technically, this still satisfies that because we have minus, uh, you know, whatever, infinity, right? Plus, but because it's tangent, it still goes under the infinity whatever right this okay and then it still goes with uh, it was 1 x plus n pi and then this was 1 of x minus pi over 2 plus n pi it still satisfies Glasser's master theorem so therefore this integral here is equal to pi okay it's equal to pi and that's it we're done all right, very powerful, very, uh, very sneaky. This is sneaky, right? I bet you weren't. You're probably thinking, oh, it's x plus tangent x or x minus cotangent x, but I don't know how to uh, format. But this could still satisfy Glass's master theorem. So that was a very sneaky example. Okay. All right, and there you go. That's pretty much it. You're done. You got you, the entire tools for integration B, for speed integration, you got a, a huge load of integration techniques that you now know how to perform. So go off and um, go crazy like math stack exchange people, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's This is literally the final uh, episode for this uh, integration B training for advanced. Integration B training in general maybe I don't know but um, for advanced though like this is this is the last uh, technique and it's finally over for whole how many years uh, two years actually holy hell almost two years uh, from beginner to advanced is uh, crazy cannot believe it um, but yeah I really want to thank all of you for bearing with me for waiting for Pretty much you guys have been waiting for me to finish the series for a good two years. So, and to all those others that are new and that came here, thank you for joining me. And I hope uh, this was very, I hope this was very fun and to like learn and exciting. So, uh, of course, the whole purpose is to not just educate people with integration techniques, but I just want to popularize speed integration because there's not that many integration B competitions. But it would be amazing if there were more common uh, integration bees. So, and 
knowing now that we all learned and that this is full public access of learning some cool integration techniques that we can apply in integration B. I hope that it, more integration Bs are uh, appear and more popular. So now that you have gained the wizardry of speed integration, go out there and have fun. Become the most dangerous competitor for whatever integration B that you're competing in. Okay. Good luck. And yeah, I hope this was very helpful. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.